Jacob in the UK is calling in specifically to prove the resurrection. And it's it's a perfect call for Paul. So here you go, Paul. Welcome, Jacob. Hey, Jacob. Hi there, Matt. Thanks for taking my call. It's good to speak to you too. Um, yeah, so if you don't mind, um, the reason why is because I've been told, or is that because um, I've been told, I'm not going to beat about the bush, I've been told that um, Jesus' 10 out of the 12 disciples died came when they'd seen Jesus rise from the dead. Now I'm thinking if someone's willing to die for something that they've seen, then it should give us a clear proof of of a um, of of a, of the story because uh, Nero mentions Peter dying for what he saw, and um, so, I think Nero mentioned Paul as well. So Jacob, yeah. So I recently had a conversation on Unbelievable with Sean McDowell, who did his entire doctrinal dis dissertation on this. Are you? Do you know who Sean McDowell is, or his father Josh McDowell? Uh, no, but. Okay, so Josh McDowell, he wrote um, Evidence That Demands a Verdict, and he's very, very well known. And his son, Sean, did his doctrinal dissertation, probably the biggest doctrinal dissertation on the fate of the martyrs, fate of the apostles that exists. Now, in Sean's own words, only two of the 12, you had this exactly flipped. He ha There is good evidence for only two of the 12, uh, Peter and James, son of Zebedee. Those are the only two that we can have any level of confidence that what we know in history isn't just legend. In Sean's own words, he doesn't know where legend ends and where truth begins for 10 of the 12 apostles. So you have that exactly flipped. Uh, only two do we have good... Oh, okay, I, I didn't know that. Sorry about that. I didn't know that. It's, um... But if that's and... the case, if that's what the scholars are saying, why isn't that not being preached? Why do the, why do the vicars not say, oh, well, actually, we've made a mistake. You know what? We've made a mistake. It's actually two, not 10. Right, and, and Sean goes around saying this exact thing every time he's on every show ever. He, he admonishes pastors and other church leaders for using the, what is very poor evidence for the martyrdoms in order to try and make this point. Uh, I mean, and the other problem is, of course, I have my own criteria for martyrdom, which Sean and I have debated, but in my own criteria, it demands three things. First is that the person tells us that they saw Jesus uh, Jesus after he died, uh, resurrected Jesus. Two is that the person actually had a chance to recant, because if they didn't have a chance to recant, then, then really we're not saying that they died for truth at that point. They may well have died for, for pissing someone off, which actually in the case of bro Jesus' brother, that's exactly why he was killed, not for his beliefs. And the third one, uh, is that we actually know they died. So on the third one, we only have two out of the 12. Uh, we also have Paul and the brother of James, but but they're, they're not part of the 12, so we're not talking about them. Uh, to and to be I'll fair, we're convinced that all of them have in fact died. It's we're just convinced not that all died. of them right. died as martyrs. Uh, died as martyrs and or died in any way, you know, that we could say that they died for their faith. So, and then the other problem, so of course the problems there is that we don't know... Um, we also don't have these people saying in their own words that I saw Jesus appear. We literally, uh, even if we took First and Second Peter as written by the Apostle Peter, which I do not believe, but even if we did, nowhere in those two books does Peter say, I saw resurrected Jesus. That's just not in there. Um, and then for the other one, James, son of Zebedee, uh, similarly in, in the book of James, it doesn't say, I saw Jesus. So, you know, this argument that people try and put forth of, we solidly have these apostles who were eyewitnesses, and this is why they died. That argument just falls apart historically so quickly. Uh, it, it's terrible. So this is actually why modern apologists have shifted it back to say the apostles were willing to die. If you listen to any of the big ones, they all shifted back. They were willing to die. So obviously they were wandering around knowing they could have been hurt, but that's not a very good example like uh, there's a lot of criminals who wander around and they know that there's a chance they're going to get caught but that doesn't mean they don't go around stealing things or murdering people everyone knows there's a chance there's going to be consequences but we still take that risk so even that apologetic that's saying well the disciples know they might have been hurt for this it's pretty weak you have to admit that that's that's no longer this compelling grisly detail well, well, I mean, I suppose, I mean, but, but, I mean, if, if, um, cause that's a very good point about Peter and, and James and, and, and you're right. I mean, like, I mean, that, that's absolutely true. But if, if 
Peter was willing, but the problem is, if we got historical evidence that Peter and James were willing to die, and the, the Apostle Paul died claiming that he was still Jesus, well, I wonder what convinced Peter and Paul in able to die for it. I wonder what convinced them, because there was many G- Christ in the time. So the problem, why is, the the problem is you don't know. The, the problem, Jacob, is you don't know that they died or why. Um, so you, you do realize that people have died for other religions as well, right? Yeah, but this is just something that, yeah, no, that's true. That's true. And, I, and I'm Correct. wondering what can it's, it's much better to just say yes than yes, but <laughs> because there, there, people have died for a lot of things. Now, I'm happy to accept that these individuals were not dying for something that they knew to be a lie, although I won't rule that out as a possibility because there have been people who've been willing to sacrifice themselves for a greater cause, even if the thing that they're expressly uh, stating, uh, they know to not be true. Uh, I've, 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 oh, I've watched people nearly put themselves in, in this position. Existed. Sorry, what? I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm quite a naive person because I saw the case for Christ and, and the person said, oh, well, liars don't make martyrs. That's, that's a fact. And I thought, oh, okay, lies don't make martyrs. But then if you're wait, 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 wait. You watched a movie, The Case for Christ, and you heard someone say liars don't make martyrs, and then you just believe that liars don't make martyrs? Is that all it takes? If that's the case, then you should believe me and Paul when we say that, in fact, someone might be a liar and martyred. Yeah, no, that's true. It's difficult for me, obviously, because I've got a, a learning disability, so it's quite hard for me to, to, to like, do, like, like, think about these things um so apologies apologies for that no no, no it's fine but, it's but, I, we're just going to point out the problems that we see in reasoning and you're done fine in expressing it the thing is let's say for example that four will double it four of the apostles knowingly allowed themselves to be murdered while stating i have witnessed the risen christ who was dead and it, and now lives and I will, I will say this until you run me through that it is true. Let's say there were four of them that did it. Yeah. That meets all of Paul's criteria. Um, it's, it's express statements. And let's say we had good, solid evidence for that. Does that mean that those four people are actually telling the truth? And does that mean that there actually is a Jesus that rose from the dead? Um, well... Actually, probably, I'm sorry to say this, and I'm going to put my hands up here, probably not, because in World War II, a lot of Germans died claiming that Hitler was going to win the war and things like that. Um, so, yeah, probably not. I mean, if we, I mean, the thing is, is that because it happened 2,000 years ago, um, yeah, you know, you're, you're probably right. It's that it's not, um, it's not probably the four, well, if that's, that's pretty bad to two. If two, I mean, two died for winning a light, I mean, two died for claiming that, claiming it was a lie. I mean, that is a possibility, I suppose. But it's just for me, I, I, um, I just thought that when I was told that, I thought it was quite a good, quite a good well, argument. But um, obviously, you know. And you asked me the question, how might they, you know, we're talking about the two. We're talking about, if we're talking about Peter and Paul, who are the best attested, um, Paul saw a vision. Everything that he says, if you look in Galatians, when he describes what happened to him, he was caught up in the third heaven. He didn't know whether it was real or not. He describes that him, his, himself. Uh, so Paul had a vision. And if so, that leaves hmm. sort of down to one. So now we're down to Peter. So how can we explain Peter? Perhaps, perhaps it's a post bereavement hallucination, which are well documented. It happens about 15% of the population. Um, that, that, and they, it can even be multimodal. And so, you know, it's not so hard. I, I understand that if you think that 500 people saw him, well, that's different. But all we have is a story that 500 people saw him. If we're really down to yeah. just two people who who became believers at least five years apart, um, they had separate experiences that they believed themselves were genuine. You know, then we're just talking about, and I think Matt would agree that we don't deny experiences. People's experiences are their experiences the problem comes when they attribute them to certain things. And we don't know if they're attributing them to the right thing or not. So the fact that we have two men in history who died attributing an experience to something, and frankly, we don't even know whether Paul just died politically or not. You know, we're, we're the evidence is pretty slim here. Like this is one of the weaker um, 
resurrection apologetics, I would say. It's one of the reasons why I was pointing out that if we had four really good examples, sure. that still wouldn't be enough to prove anything <laughs> um, because those four people could be wrong too. But what we have are two kind of bad examples. And, and in, in reality, it, it ties me to, to like people who are like, oh, well, how do you explain Jesus walking on water? How do you explain, explain the loaves and fishes miracle? How do you explain this miracle? And my answer is, please demonstrate that this occurred at all. Because it, these are the types of stories that are told about all sorts of supernatural, special religious figures from all sorts of religions. And they're the so same sorts of stories that we tell as fantasies and fictions to each other. And so when you say, ah, but this person who actually knew Jesus was willing to die to defend the notion that Jesus rose from the dead. Well, maybe they felt that the... It was worthy, like Eusebius, who basically argued that it was good to die for the lie because spreading the the, the love of Christianity and the truth of God's plan, um, can if you if you lie and it promotes the good, then that must be a good. Is essentially what what Eusebius was arguing. I don't think anybody needs to lie, because first of all, I don't know that any of these people actually existed. Um, don't get me wrong; I'm happy with the notion that. Paul existed and wrote things. Um, how accurate of a story, how accurate of a recollection do we have? Um, the words that are attributed to them, how accurate are those? I have no idea. And so when somebody says, how do you explain people willingly dying for Christianity? Um, my answer is people have willingly died for many things. I think that generally they believe them to be true, but that is independent from whether or not those things are true. Yeah, no, exactly. And did, did um, so? Quick question. Um, this is a, a question. Did did Nero actually mention Paul or not? Because I because um, there's a sort of words that Nero wrote about Paul. And well, the, Nero didn't really write anything. We don't, or at least we don't have any extant writings from Nero. So what we have is okay. other. What we have is uh, Tacitus talking about the you know the the alleged fire that allegedly. Nero set uh, and blamed the Christians. That's actually even in question with modern historians right now. But even if you accept that as true, you know, um, that that actually lends less credence to this whole idea that anyone actually died as a proper martyr because all he was trying to do was cover his tracks and just arresting anyone who became a Christian and probably giving them zero credence about, they didn't care about their theology. This was just who we're blaming for the current troubles. So you know, if that account is true, it actually works against this whole argument. And I'm and I'm not sure because and Paul, you might know better than I do, but I don't think there's any mm. extra biblical tie of any sort between Nero and uh, Peter and Paul. Not at all, none. No. Yeah, and so the source of this, despite the fact that Nero was a real person, or at least as real as we can demonstrate, the source of this is still the Bible, and and that's the funny thing for me is that. I've said many times, you know, I'm not a mythicist. I'm fine with the notion that Jesus existed. I have friends who are mythicists. I have friends who make a great case for mythicism. Uh, some of them are conspiracy theory minded type things. And some of them are actually just, you know, re really saying, hey, this is this everything. If we took it, made a list of the things that we know about Jesus, they line up really well with fictional deities and they don't aren't supported by anything. It's not like, you know, we, we don't have birth certificates or tomb. I can't find it. You know, there's a tomb there that they say is the tomb and it's empty. Well, congratulations. I got an empty tomb right next to me. It's it's an old walk-in closet. I could tell you somebody was buried in there and they got up in three days and you don't believe me? Come over here. You can see there's no body left in that closet. And when we're looking at things like that, I don't have to believe that people were lying. I just have to believe that people were people, which is they're telling stories, stories that were important to them. And people are incredibly prone to hyperbole and exaggerating. And no, 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 I really need you to listen to this story um, because he could walk on water, this dude, or he raised the dead, this dude. It, this When people think that this is so, there's a message that's so important, they turn into Trump. And that is, I'm going to exaggerate. I'm not saying that in any political frame. I'm talking about, for the entirety uh, of watching Trump, even you know, in the '80s, uh, running around doing his his um, you know business air quotes tycoon tycoon stuff, it was salesmanship. It is exaggerating. 
It is the reason why they put people in lab coats in commercials. It's the reason why they put women in bikinis in commercials. It is, let me give you something that I know is going to trip in your brain. Hey, here's something for me to pay attention to. And wow, if they're saying it's this good, even if they're exaggerating, it must be at least this good. You know, I'll be at least 70% that happy. And we have to think about those things when somebody's telling us stories, especially when those stories are about magical occurrences that are inconsistent with everything we know about reality. And there's certainly nothing about the early church that, you know, that we, we believe they were sincere. We believe they sincerely believed it. That's not, but that alone doesn't tell us anything. Hmm. Could I tell you the real quick reason why I personally do believe in it all? If, if you don't mind, if that's all right. Have you got enough time or? Well, we're almost out of time. What I find confusing is that you called in to say you can prove the resurrection with historical evidence. You ended up agreeing with us about the martyr thing, and now you want to tell us the real reason you believe? What's that about? What's, what's the real reason? Uh, uh, okay, all right. Don't worry. It's just, okay, it's, um, no, I just called in because I thought that that was, the true, that was the true story, but then you know you pointed out a lot of things. which were, check, out, which were very yeah, check out Christian scholar Sean McDowell. He believes fervently, just as you do, but he will he will debunk this argument for you. Okay. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much for your time. And, uh, Cheers, thanks. Uh, thanks, David. Great. Thank you.